right, we continue our, our video series that is dedicated to case discussion, dental case discussion. This time we will discuss with you three interesting um, components of dentistry. We will discuss with you endodontics, we will discuss with you isolation, and we will discuss with you uh, direct composite restoration. And this is the, the preview of the case. You can see the really minimally invasive, super minimally invasive access. Uh, and I would uh, like to share with you all the steps and uh, my thoughts and my guidelines regarding why I selected and why I choose that type of access that is completely not uh, straight line and completely not according to all the classical rules of endodontic treatment. So this is initial situation. This is the smile of our colleague. She came to my office and uh, she actually, he, she was very uh, insistive to save this tooth uh, with no extraction and uh, to perform as minimal invasive treatment as was possible. That was irreversible pulpitis with a big caries defect that was with a perforation in the, into the pulp chamber. So basically we, we faced with a pretty, pretty difficult situation because the localization of the caries defect was from, um, from interdental and from buccal side. And uh, considering the fact that we have caries defect and considering the fact of classic endodontic treatment that we have to go with a straight line axis, after my treatment I'm not sure that we'll be able to have enough two structures uh, to resist occlusal forces, okay? So we discussed with this case, I gave some options, alternative options as extraction and orthodontic treatment, for example, and the crown or whatever, and uh, then we end up with, uh, with a really super minimally invasive dentistry with, uh, let's say, tip that is called defect-oriented axis, so the axis would be performed through this perforation, but when we do that type of access, we can preserve a lot of two structures, which is amazing. But in that type of access, we have a huge risk to get instrument separation or to create ledge during process of instrumentation. So we have to take into consideration that risk and we have to discuss this risk with patients. Since patients is, 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 since patient was dentist and is dentist, uh, I told you that we can break file, we can make ledge, and etc. etc. She said, I trust you, so I would prefer to do this really minimally invasive treatment and uh, to save as much to structures as it possible. So now we have, let's say, a uh, guideline from our patient and we have to understand that in case when your instrument will work in a super curved canals, but in this case it is super curved canals because the instrument will go into a orifice being bended, being curved. In that clinical uh, conditions, instrument will face with a lot of cyclic fatigue, okay? And you have to understand what instrument is really uh, indicated in that, uh, in that particular clinical conditions. For example, you know that there are some instruments that you have to know that there is no universal instrument at all uh, on the market. There are some instruments that are really good in, uh, in torsion stress uh, conditions. There are instruments that are really good in cyclic uh, fatigue uh, conditions. So in, in few words, if you have to work in the curved root canal, the best choice is to utilize thin instrument, low taper, and uh, instrument that is super flexible. In that case, we selected instruments with taper 2. Okay, taper 2 is really, really small taper, so they are flexible by, by taper. And uh, accurately, you can use these instruments in uh, extreme conditions. And they are single use definitely for, 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 that clinical, for that clinical case. So basically we were able to find two root canals instead of one, two root canals here. You know that in the lower teeth we have a lot of uh, examples when you have two root, uh, two root canals in the central incisors, laterals and canines as well. And uh, by the way, you can see here on the lateral incisors there are also two root canals, the split. 
uh, okay, and uh, we were able to instrument these root canals, we were able to make proper irrigation and uh, we were able to obturate these root canals uh, completely. So we end up with endodontic. Let me go, let me go now into the restorative and uh, rubbing end part. Rubber dam isolation was achieved or obtained utilizing heavy rubber dam membrane. The heavy rubber dam is really good because it gives you a pretty strong retraction of soft tissues. And I used also floss tie just to move my rubber dam piece uh, more epically. So I was able to, let's say, to expose um, healthy two structures. So when once we removed caries, we got this um, defect-oriented uh, defect -oriented, oriented axis. We were able to find these two root canals. And this is the, the end of endodontic treatment. So you can see that the axis was super conservative, but super extreme. And one more time, I would like to highlight this. That's why it's not axis that, that, that can be uh, taught in universities, for example, because this axis is against classic endodontic rules. If you decide to do this axis, you have to understand that you take a big risk. But if you know how to utilize proper instruments, and which kind of instruments, you may take these cases also uh, as more predictable. This is what we have to admire as well. So we started restorative uh, restorative plan with direct composite restoration. Since we have a lot of two structure preserved, we can easily do uh, direct composite restoration here. The big problem during direct composite restoration was that uh, we were not able to put wedge and matrix because in this case uh, the defect was super deep and if I would place any wedge, my matrix would be driven inside the defect and I would get irreversible or reverse reverse contact which is not good because of the food impaction and calculus uh, development. So in this case we did everything freehand. We restored dentin layer, then we restored also enamel layer and before the very final layer we placed transparent uh, matrix band. Okay, We packed this matrix band with Teflon really strongly. We packed this matrix band with Teflon and then in this case, if you will take the packable composite and you will pack your packable composite towards this matrix, there is a big risk that matrix will be deattached because of the pressure and you will have overhand. So we went into the really specific technique of composite layer of composite restoration, which is called injectable technique, or or let's say it's not injectable, is inject uh, injection molded technique. In few words, I put highly filled flowable composite on the base of matrix. We did not light cure this, this uh, flowable composite. I took packable composite. I put this packable composite in uh, full contact with this uncured flowable composite. And gently I was packing, gently, smoothly, continuously, I was packing this uh, normal packable composite forward, actually lingually. It was packed, packed, packed. It, it, it forced it pushed uh, flowable composite into these uh, tiny, tiny narrow spaces. And then I took matrix from lingual side. Okay, I took this, the end of the matrix from the lingual side. I pressed from the buckle side, I pressed with spatula or with a plastic instrument. I, I pressed my matrix cervically. So it, I, I created this wedge effect by, mat, by, by plastic, flat plastic instruments. So I hold my matrix here. From the lingual side, I was, I was holding my, my matrix. And then I moved matrix to the lingual side. And material was uh, following the movement of, of this matrix. That gave me possibility to create this uh, really smooth emergent, emergent profile. So this is the tip that you can may use in, in, in certain clinical uh, clinical cases. So we end up with that final result here after some stripping, some polishing, we got really smooth emergent profile. So actually in this case we decided uh, minimally invasive treatment as a core of all the process. We made extreme, cons extremely conservative access. We choose proper instruments for endodontic treatment in that clinical conditions. We use heavy rubber dam and floss ties to retract my rubber dam and soft tissues. And I used injection molded technique to perform smooth emergent profile in case when you cannot put wedge to support your matrix to avoid 
undercuts. So this was a as, as, as simple uh, summary for uh, according to this case. So this is the case number three. We continue this series. After one week, you will get another video, which will be the fourth video about clinical cases, clinical discussions. Uh, Write down in comments what kind of topics you want us to cover because we will also do in advance some, some clinical cases discussion. So maybe you will add a topic that you would like to have. Uh, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and to switch on notifications. And every time you, we will put some new stuff on our YouTube channel, you will get uh, this notification and you will not miss pretty, um, pretty interesting and important uh, and useful content. For all participants that want to join us during our hands-on courses, I'm, I'm really happy and you are more than well, welcome to join our uh, Dental Academy in Kiev. You may find link to our website uh, under this video so you can just sign up to any course you want. If you would like to, if you would like to enhance your skills, knowledge in restorative and endo components, we have separate program which is module 4 from endodontics to restorations. You can join this core program and you will learn full concept of endodontic treatment and post-endodontic rehabilitation. One more time, thank you for your kind attention. Get ready for episode number four next week and uh, see you very soon. Bye-bye.